we made it through another year somehow, which means that we have been blessed with a bunch of new 25 year old cars that can finally be imported to the USA as long as you live in Florida. Hope you remember the lyrics to Mbop because today we are going back to 1997 town, baby. I'm James, I'm very excited, and this is the D -D 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 a big thank you to Wink for sponsoring today's video. Everyone knows that wine is a very complicated drink. Not to mention, very expensive. Come on guys, it's pretty simple and affordable thanks to Wink. Curated by over 5 million customer ratings, Wink is the only wine subscription out there crafting and delivering 200 plus high quality wines for any budget. Simple Nolan, adorable. Buying wine is one thing, but figuring out your wine palette takes years of experience. Really? Uh, <laughs> because with Wink's easy to use palette quiz, they select the perfect wines for you in just one minute and deliver them right to your door with free shipping. Plus, there's no monthly commitment. You can skip or cancel at any time. As Wink says, happiness guaranteed. Cheers. Oh, cheers boys. Mmm, boys, I feel the, the minerals of the French hillside dancing across my tongue. Mmm, I love that tantalizing new tennis ball aroma. Wow, uh, hmm. everyone's different and luckily Wink understands. Doesn't matter if you're vegan, keto, or just prefer low sugar wines, Wink has wine for everyone and honestly, I love that. The best part is if you order right now, you'll receive four bottles for just $29.95. Did you say? Four bottles for $29.95? Did you say four bottles for $29.95? Of this? Yeah, plus free shipping right to your front door. So get paired with the perfect bottle of wine today by clicking the link in the description below. Now, let's raise a glass and get back to the show. We need to open another bottle, I think. Uh, don't worry. Zach and I have a plan. We're gonna start strong and kick off this list with a Japanese legend, the 1997 Honda Civic Type R. It's Pirate's favorite car. Or if you're like me and like to impress people by using chassis codes, the EK9. The EK, or the hatchback version of the sixth generation Civic, was the first one to wear the Type R badge. And guess what the R stands for? Racing! It came with stiffer shocks, a close ratio five speed transmission, a limited slip differential, a seam welded body to make it extra rigid. It also had the reddest interior that you have ever seen. You can spill ketchup or cocktail sauce or whatever all over those Recaros and nobody would know. Have you been eating shrimp cocktails in your car again, James? No. James, we think you've been eating shrimp cocktails in your car again. Prove it. We can't. Oh, and another thing that it has is a hand-ported B16B engine that makes 182 horsepowers. That's one of the highest horsepower per liter ratios for a naturally aspirated engine. Ever. And the whole thing only weighs 2,300 pounds. Now people have been making Type R clones in the US since day frickin' one, but now you can actually bring in the real deal starting in August, because that's when the oldest EK9's VIN turns 25. Okay, but listen closely, because this isn't the last Honda we're gonna see on this list. But you're gonna have to wait because this next car is a Mitsubishi. I'm talking about the Mitsubishi FTO, and no, I don't mean foot ticklers of Ohio. That's my other channel. I'll put a link in the description. The Mitsubishi FTO actually stands for Fresco Turismo Omologato, which is Japanese Italian for fresh touring origination. And it's a spicy little two-door front wheel drive coupe just like the EK9 that we just talked about. Now it's true that we've been able to import the FTO for a few years now, but in 1997, Mitsubishi decided to give it a little facelift, which is also when I got my first facelift. But besides the facelift, 1997 was also the year that the GP version R came out, not the Type R, the version R, <laughs> okay? 
stands for racing, yes. It came with upgraded suspension, a limited slip differential, a freaking mad 90s rear wing. The facelift came out in February of 97, the same year that Scottish scientists cloned Dolly the sheep, who's dead, but maybe that's not enough Mitsu for your Bishi. That's fine, because I got an even better Mitsubishi. This is one of my favorite cars ever. I'm talking about the Pajero Evolution. Now we've talked about this car truck on this show before, and for good reason. It freaking slaps. Look at this thing. It's like, it looks like a Gundam. This was a homologation variant of the Pajero, and it dominated the Dakar Rally for decades. That's because it was built for exactly that purpose, to dominate the Dakar Rally. In fact, the Paj Evo, as I like to call it, because we're buds, has won Dakar more than any other vehicle and was even driven by the first woman to ever win the event. What is up, Judah Klein Schmidt? Between 1997 and 1999, Mitsubishi built 2,500 of these freaking road Gundams. And starting this year, you can bring one into America. We're gonna come back to Japan soon, but for now, let's take a trip south of the equator, a little place I like to call criminal England, or America's upside down twin, Australia. Oh, Love Australia. The Ford Falcon of Australia is nothing like the Ford Falcon in America. It was produced all the way up until 2016 over there, and they got a ton of wild versions of this hog. I'm talking freaking utes and stuff with a tray. But by the late 90s, the Falcon had kind of strayed a bit from its roots and lost most of the sport pedigree that it was originally known for. But that didn't stop Ford from making the Falcon XHXR8 utility. A funky looking ute with a Windsor V8 lifted from the Mustang. This puppy's good for about 250 horsepower, but that's just the beginning because it's a Ford V8. There is a ton of aftermarket support for those little toad, little b b bullfrogs. Probably supercharge that car for 800 bucks. Might not be the prettiest car on the list, but it's one of the last really cool V8 Falcons of the 20th century. Let's keep this road trip moving. Next stop, little place I like to call Germany Next up on the list is a Volkswagen because I like talking about Volkswagens and there are a lot of weird versions of Volkswagens. The weird version we're talking about today is the Mark IV Golf V R5. That's right, not V6, V5. And to clarify, the engine in my Golf is not a V5, it's a straight five. Volkswagen took a perfectly good VR6 engine and chopped off one of the cylinders. Why? Five cylinder engines have a sound that is unlike any other engine setup. I have one in my car. It's very cool. They even made an all wheel drive version of this car. So if you want yourself a weird five cylinder Golf R grandpappy, you can start bringing those over in October. All right, guys, let's say for some reason you want a British car and you want it to be really, really, really British. You're the kind of guy who eats like blood sausage and beans for breakfast. You're in luck, because 1997 was the first year of the LT1 TX1, AKA the London Taxi. It's roomy. It has classic inspired styling. Looks like a freaking PT Cruiser. And it's powered by a Nissan diesel engine. Oh my Lord. Put your clothes back on guys. I know this is so exciting, but geez Louise, we're on set. We're at work right now. Whole camera crew is just naked because they're so horny with me describing this fun car. If it's good enough for the queen, it's good enough for you, all right? You know, she's been injured by her corgis multiple times. But what if it's not good enough for you? What if you want a chauffeur car with a little bit more class, a little bit more luxury, a little bit more cylindres? Well, that brings us to one of my favorite cars ever definitely on this list, the 1997 Toyota Century. That's right, we're back in Japan. The Century has been around for almost a century, since 1967, as the Rolls Royce of Japan. But in 1997, for the car's 30th anniversary, they updated it with new architecture styling and a big fat honking V12, baby. This is the same V12 that Smokey Nagata shoehorned into his top secret Supra. We talked about it a few weeks ago. You know how it works, link in the description. This car was so exclusive that Toyota decides who could even buy one. But now they're on the used car market and you could cruise one of these yachts down Route 66. 
which is not as cool as I thought it would be. Another Japanese vehicle I'd like to mention is a van because I really want to benefit from that van life SEO. JDM vans have seen a huge rise in popularity in the last few years. Some states are downright banning them all together. Nolan made a video about the subject and I definitely recommend you watch it if you're thinking about importing one because the government might come and take it from you and crush it. So if Delicas and Hiaces are too mainstream for your likings, we now have another option. Talking about the Nissan El Grand. This funky looking two-tone minivan came with a slew, an absolute slew of gasoline and diesel engine choices, two or four wheel drive, and Nissan's first internet enabled satellite navigation system. Not only is it fully insulated, but it has a ton of room inside. People in Europe are already doing full camper conversions on these. And now, it's our turn! But you probably aren't watching this video because you wanna go camping. You're probably watching this video because you're a freak and you like to go fast. So let's talk about the GTR. The R33 generation of the Nissan Skyline GTR has already been available to import to the US for a few years. We talked about it in last year's video. But there's a special edition for the 97 model year called the Nismo 400R. And it's a homologation special for the 24 hours of the mall. Nismo, Nissan's racing division, took the standard GTR and improved nearly everything. They bored and stroked the RB26 DETT, upgraded nearly all the internals, and bumped the red line up to 9,000 RPM. The thing makes 400 horsepower, hence the name, and it gets up to 60 miles per hour in four seconds. Plus, it looks nasty. Nismo planned on producing 100 of these, but only 44 made it out of the factory. And the best news, the 1997 model year technically began production at the end of 96. So by the time you're watching this video, you can already import one legally. Go get one. You got 300, 400 grand burning a hole in your pocket? Do it. We have one more car to discuss today. I teased it at the beginning if you, maybe you noticed. Remember at the beginning when I told you that because this, this is the last Honda we're gonna see on this list. You remember? Well, I'm not a liar. I'm a truth teller. This next car's a Honda. I'm talking about the Honda NSX Type S. The NSX Type S came with lightweight aluminum BBS wheels, a lightweight rear spoiler, a Momo steering wheel, so you know it's serious and carbon Kevlar Recaro bucket seats. It had a lightweight battery and didn't even have power steering. They even used a special mesh engine cover to help drop the weight nearly 100 pounds versus the regular NSX. And to take full advantage of all of these weight savings, Honda refused to sell it to fat people. They also revised the suspension with stiffer front dampers and a thicker rear sway bar. But that's not even the best version of the NSX. They also made one called the Type S Zero that was even more bare bones and I'm sure more expensive. No cruise control, no radio, no power locks, no traction control, no fog lights, no airbags. That took off about 110 pounds compared to the regular Type S. Now they only made 30 of these bad hogs starting in uh, 1997, so if you want one, you better start looking. Now it's not easy to import a car to the US. It costs a lot of money and there's a lot of red tape to jump through. You're, you should get yourself a broker. But if you're really determined, and this is something that you need to do, it's not impossible and hopefully you got a few ideas from this video. Um, we have a couple of friends that import cars. If you want something JDM, check out Top Rank Importers. If you want something European, check out uh, Jamie at orchideuro.com. Both very uh, reputable dudes. Cause you don't want Uncle Sam crushing your car. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you for watching all of the other videos. Uh, it's been a weird couple of years. Let's keep going. I love you.